Remember we talked about vector space, everybody. Suppose V is a set with two operations, vector addition and a scalar multiplication. These two operations are defined for this set. If the listed axioms are satisfied for every U and V and W in set V and every scalar or real number C and D in V, then you have something, some mathematical object that you define as a vector space. So here we go. Remember that one of them was addition. If you add two objects, two vectors, it is closed under addition. It means that the sum or addition of those two vectors are also in V. It is commutative. U plus V is the same as V plus U. There is no difference between them. And then grouping doesn't change the addition. So U plus V plus W is the same as U plus V plus W, associated property for addition. Set V has a zero vector, zero, such that for every element like U in that set, U plus zero is equal to U. This is called additive identity. For every U in V, you can find another vector, another object in that set, which we denote by negative U, and if you add u and negative u together, it's equal to zero. Remember, this guy is called additive inverse. This is for addition. We had some axioms for multiplication or specifically scalar multiplication as well. So it is closed under scalar multiplication. What's the meaning of that? It means that if I take a random real number and an object in that set, which is a vector, C times U is also in that set. Distributed property. C can be distributed over addition. So CU plus CV is CU plus CV, just basically distributing C over parentheses. Then C plus D times U, we can basically take U and distribute it over the addition of these two real numbers it becomes Cu plus Du. This is distributed property. Then remember grouping these numbers doesn't change the multiplication. C times Du is the same as Cd times U. This is called associative property. And 10, one times U is equal to U, which is called a scalar identity. So a set along with all of these 10 axioms is called a vector space. Now we're interested in working with smaller sets. We call them subspace of a vector space. A non-empty subset like W of a vector space V is a subspace of V if that smaller collection that we call W is also a vector space under these four axioms. So again, you have a larger set like V and you're going to take a smaller collection like W. This W is a subspace of this vector space V if it satisfies all of these 10 axioms. So we need to check these axioms for this smaller set one by one. No matter what are the objects in that set. Okay. Remember the 10 axioms that we defined for a vector space. Question says, hey, show that this set, including triple x of one comma zero comma x of three, with the condition that x of one and x of three are real numbers is definitely a subspace of the space. 
So when you write R to the power three, it is saying that, hey, I'm dealing with this space. What are the operations? Standard operations, vector addition, and scalar multiplication, as you saw before. So let us begin. The set W is non-empty. OK, thank you for that. It contains the zero vector. Zero, zero, zero is located at the origin. And this entry, this element, this object, definitely belongs to this set. So it is non-empty. Now, if you take a look at the graph, if you graph this in the space, it says, hey, I'm only dealing with x and z values. My y is missing. It's basically you're working with a plane, which plane? x, z plane. So you are working with the objects in this plane. You're working with the vectors in this plane. So the entries or vectors in this set are visually can be graphed on the right-hand side. Very good. The set W is closed under addition. Why is that? Well, from calculus, if I take this vector and add it to another vector, it still have zero as y value. The y vanishes. There is no y. So if you take these vectors and add them together, you get another vector just right here in the same plane. So this is closed under vector addition. There is no doubt there. So this is your condition here. Next, we can take a look at the algebra. So visually, we can visualize what's going on. Algebraically, you can write down two vectors. The first vector, x of 1, 0, x of 3 y sub 1, 0, y sub 3, and add these together. You get the addition of x1 and y1, the addition of 0 and 0, and the addition of x sub 3 and y sub 3. You might be interested in writing them as x1, 0, z1, x2, 0, z3, and so on. It doesn't matter what are you using. As long as you're following the format, for this set, you should be fine. So addition between x1 and y1 gives you x1 plus y1. 0 plus 0 is 0. x3 plus y3 is x3 plus y3. And as you can see, it is basically the summation of two numbers, which is another number, another real number. The middle element is 0, and the last element is also a real number. So, so far, it is algebraically and visually closed under addition. This is closed under scalar multiplication as well. Why is that? If I take a vector here, x1, 0, and x3, and take a scalar like c, and take a look at the multiplication, scalar multiplication between c and this vector, it is basically just distributing C over each entry here. So C x1, comma C sub 0, and comma C sub, C times x sub 3. It has 0 in its second component, and definitely it follows the same format. The format of the elements in W are x1, 0, x3. x1 and x3 are just real numbers. The most important part is that you have zero in the middle. C times x1 is real number. C times x3 is another real number. And this is zero. You can basically check each one of these axioms one by one, which should be very easy for you because it's just simple algebra. For u plus v equals to v plus u, you can just take two vectors. 
and just arrange these, rearrange them, reorder them, y1 plus x1, 0, y3 plus x3, and show that it is equal to v plus u. And grouping them together should, should be very easy for you. And you have a zero vector, which is 0, 0, and 0. The entry that we use to show that it is non-empty. So you have your zero vector here. There is no doubt there that you have a zero vector. If you have a vector, the opposite of that vector can be written as negative times that entries of that vector. Add them together and definitely equals to the zero vector. We show the scalar multiplication that you can easily distribute C into each entry and it is another vector in your set W. You can add U and V together and do the multiplication, basically pure algebra, and you can take C plus D and distribute it over U and so on. You can take one and multiply it by any vector. It gives you U again. So this is just pure algebra, but the method explanation should follow that, hey, we have 10 axioms. Since this is a subset of the space, as you can see, this guy, just a bunch of points in the space, the y values are zero. And it satisfies all of these 10 conditions, 10 axioms. So you basically have a subspace. This set, along with vector addition, scalar multiplication, is also a vector space. And since it's a subset of the space, if we call it a subspace of the space. We have a nice theorem, everybody. Makes our life much more easier. It is basically a test for a subspace. What does it tell us? It tells us here, yeah, if you have a non-empty subset of a vector space V, then W is a subspace of V if and only if, so it gives you necessary and sufficient condition. The two closure conditions listed below hold. What are those? The very first one says, hey, if you take two vectors, u and v in w, then their addition is also in w. OK, it's not that bad. It's just saying that, hey, it must be closed under addition. And two, if u is in w and c is any number, any scalar, then it must be closed under scalar multiplication. So basically, it says, hey, instead of checking every single axioms, just check the first axiom for addition and the first axiom for scalar multiplication, then you're fine. But make sure you know you can prove that it is non-empty. Okay, you always find that entry or element that makes that subset a non-empty set. Then if these two conditions are met, you say that hey, I have a subspace. For example, a subspace of the two by two matrices. Remember last time we proved that this guy is basically a vector space. Let W be the set of all two by two symmetric matrices. So instead of working with the general two by two matrices, we are looking at a very specific case of matrices that are symmetric matrices. We say that, hey, let W be the set of all two by two symmetric matrices. We want to show that W is a subspace of the vector space of all two by two matrices with the standard operations of matrix addition and the scalar multiplication. Ooh, let's see. We have a theorem test for a subspace. 
It says, hey, if W is for sure indeed non-empty subset of a vector space like V, that W is a subspace if and only if these two closure conditions are met. If you take two symmetric matrices, add them together, then their sum is also a symmetric matrix. If you multiply a scalar and a symmetric matrix, the outcome, which is C times that matrix or scalar multiplication between C and that matrix must be symmetric as well. So we are going to going back to chapter one and double check our understanding and refresh our memory. Recall that a square matrix is symmetric if it's equal to its transpose. Okay, it's not that bad. You remember this definition. Let set of all two by two matrices under the given operations, matrix addition and scalar multiplication, we prove this. We prove this set is basically a vector space. We only need to show that this W is non-empty and it satisfies two conditions. Can you guess what is the element that make this set non-empty set? What is the single value that you can guess that is a member of this set and makes it non-empty? Very good. This set is definitely non-empty. We can easily find some basic two by two matrices that are symmetric, right? Like identity matrix. It's a very basic example of a symmetric matrix. So W for sure is non-empty. W is closed under addition. Why is that? Suppose you have two symmetric matrices, A sub one and A sub two. Since A sub one is symmetric, A sub one is equal to its transpose. And since A sub two is symmetric, A sub two is equal to A sub two transpose. What's the meaning of that? It means that if I take the addition of A one and A two and find the transpose, it is equal to the addition of their transpose. So you take A1, the transpose of A1, you can take the transpose of A2 and you can separate these, which is basically A1 plus A2. But what's the meaning of that? It means that, hey, I took the summation of two matrices, the transpose is equal to that summation. So it's basically saying that, hey, W is closed under addition. If A1 and A2 are symmetric matrices of order two, then so their summation. So you basically show that it is closed under addition. The summation of any two symmetric matrix is symmetric as well. Now for the scalar multiplication. W is closed under scalar multiplication. Why is that? It shouldn't be that difficult to see that if I take the scalar multiplication between C and A and find the transpose, it is equal to C times the transpose of A, which is basically equal to C times A. So we just showed that it is closed under scalar multiplication. Two conditions are met, so you basically have a subspace for matrices of order two. So again, you have a larger vector space of all two by two matrices. You take a special case, special set, subset of this larger set of what? 
of all symmetric two by two matrices. We just showed that this set is also form a vector space. Since you have a vector space, you basically define a subspace for this larger vector space. So symmetric. So on the exam, if I ask you, hey, this is what you saw before. We proved that we have a vector space of all two by two matrices. Define a subspace for me and prove that that is a subspace. These are the steps that you need to take. You can take that, hey, I'm going to take all of those symmetric matrices of size two, and I'm going to prove that it is caused under matrix addition and scalar multiplication. Make sure to double check other sets of matrices, skew symmetric matrices or diagonal matrices or other types of matrix. You should be able to check to see if they are subspaces of this vector space or not everybody. Let's go to the next slide. So here we go. Verify that W is a subspace of V. In each case, assume V has a standard operation. So let me change my ink color. So I'm giving you this set. You have one, two, three, four coordinates here. And basically you are forming a vector. So you are in the fourth dimension. X1, X2, and X3, they are all real numbers. And when we write down V equals to R to four, it means that we are adding a new dimension to the space and we are defining a four dimensional space. So is this forming a subspace for this space? Okay, we have a nice theorem. We need to make sure it is, first of all, non-empty, and it satisfies these two conditions as well. So take a look. W is definitely non-empty. Why is that? It definitely has 0, 0, 0, and 0. So 0 vector is the very first entry that comes to mind. This is the very first vector in this set. And we know that W is a subset of this space of dimension four. We need to check that W is closed under addition and scalar multiplication. Given that two vectors, X sub one, X sub two, X sub three, and zero, Y sub one, Y sub two, Y sub three, and zero are members of this set, you can basically just add them together. Addition of two vectors, you need to add the corresponding components. So you're gonna add x1 and y1, which is another number. Then you're gonna add x2 and y2, which gives you another number. Then you're gonna add x3 and y3, well, basically, these are pure algebra, another number, and then you're going to add 0 and 0, which is 0. Does it satisfy the format for this set? Yes. This set says, hey, I'm only taking the vectors that has something on the first component, on the second component, on the third component, but the last component must be equals to 0. Well, it is. Yeah, I see it here. I have a 0. So if I add these two vectors, the summation, the addition is also an entry or the vector in W. So, so far we're happy with addition. So it is close under addition. What about scalar multiplication? It should be super easy for you to verify that if I multiply a random vector from this set by a random number like C, it also has the format of elements in W. So C sub x1 is a real number. 
c sub x2 is another number, c sub x3 is another number, and finally c sub 0 becomes 0, which is basically having the same format that you see for w. So it is closed under addition and a scalar multiplication. So it is definitely a subspace or a space of dimension 4. So now check to see if this guy, the set of all points on the line x plus 2y equal to 0, is a subspace of the plane or not, all right? These are legit question. Well, we have a plane, and we want to check to see if all points on this line form a subspace for the plane or not. What are we going to do? We're going to start solving for like a point in the plane. We know x plus 2y is equal to 0. What's the meaning of that? It means that all points in parametric form can be written as negative 2t and t. Why is that? If I write this x plus 2y equal to 0, well, I can easily set y equals to t. I want to get rid of variable y. You can take x equals to t as well. It doesn't matter. You can take it s, then x plus 2t is equal to 0, or x becomes 2t, so negative 2t. So basically, here, we can represent all points on this line using parametric form where t is any real number. OK, perfect. To show that this set is closed under addition, we're going to take two vectors. The very first vector is negative 2t1 and t1. The second vector is negative 2t2 and t2. Now let us add these together. If I add v1 and v2, I get negative 2t1 and t1 plus negative 2t2 and t2, which is basically negative 2t1 minus 2t2 or negative 2 multiplied by t1 plus t2. So far, it looks fine, right? Because the general form says I have negative 2 times a parameter. I can take this parameter and call it s, and I get negative 2s. So, so far, I'm good with the first component. What about the second component? The second component is t1 plus t2. So basically, you can rewrite this as negative 2, t sub 3, and t sub 3. Does this guy, the summation, has this form? Is the format the same? So far, so good. Negative 2t, negative 2t3, t and t sub 3. What about scalar multiplication? For the scalar multiplication, you can basically show that if I take a vector like negative 2t and t and multiply it by c, I get this guy, c times two, negative 2t and t. It's basic distribution, am I right? It becomes negative 2. Ct and Ct. But remember that t is just a parameter. t is just any real number, and c is any real number. So basically, it follows the same format that we defined for this elements, these vectors that are located in this set. So basically, you define a set as a subspace of the plane. So I expect you to ask, so we can say that any line is going to be a subspace for the plane. These are the types of questions you should be asking. Can we say that any plane is a subspace of the space? Can we say that any line 
is a subspace for the space. So these are the type of question that you should be asking. You can investigate this very easily. Show that W, which includes all points in the form of X1 and X2, such that both of those are either zero or positive. They are more than or equal to zero with the standard operation is not a subspace of the plane. Okay, let's see what's happening here. We need to show that this is non-empty set and it is either not closed under addition or it is not closed under scalar multiplication, just one of them. Take a look. This set is non-empty and it is closed under addition. So if you take two positive or zero values, add them together, the outcome is going to be positive or zero. There is no doubt there. It's just basic algebra. But for a scalar, if I take negative one, this is my C, am I right? If I take C and multiply by a vector one and one from this set, it becomes negative one and negative one. But hey, the condition says both of these components must be positive. We are not accepting negative values. So here you get your error. It's not closed under scalar multiplication. So since the second condition is not met, this guy is not a subspace of the plane. For each one of them, you need to check each one, one by one. So let us make it more interesting for you. Suppose W sub five be the vector space of all functions that are defined on this closed interval zero and one. Suppose W1, W2, W3, and W4 are defined as follow. Okay, W1, so we're going back to calculus, is the set of all polynomial functions that are defined on closed interval zero and one. W2 is a set of all functions that are differentiable on closed interval zero and one. It means that the limit definition of the derivative is defined for them. W3 is the set of all functions that are continuous on the closed interval zero and one. W4 is the set of all functions that are integrable on this closed interval zero and one. You can visualize these as well, right? W1, W2, W3, W4, and all functions. Show that W1 is a subspace of W2, is a subspace of W3, is a subspace of W4, and it's the subspace of W5. Okay, let's check to see what's going on here. You're going back to calculus. From calculus, you know that every polynomial function is definitely differentiable. So if you have a polynomial function, for sure that polynomial function is differentiable. So W1 is a subspace of W2. Every differentiable function is continuous. Remember that the inverse is not correct. If you have continuous function, that continuous function might end up with cas and it's not differentiable. But if it's differentiable, for sure it is continuous. Every continuous function is definitely integrable. And every integrable function is a function. Well, thank you for that. It means that since we know W1 is a subspace of W2, and W2 is a subspace of W3, W3 is a subspace of W4, and it's a subspace of W5. So our conclusion is W1 is a subspace of W2, is a subspace of W3, is a subspace of W4, and finally, it's a subspace of W5. The order here can be written as W1, 
is a subspace of W3, or W1 is a subspace of W4, or you can show that W1 is a subspace of W5 as well. So from each one of these, you can take one of them and connect it to the, to the other subspace. They have a nice theorem. The theorem says the intersection of subspaces is a subspace. If V and W are both subspaces of a vector space like U, then for sure you can conclude that their intersection, which is denoted by V intersection W is also a subspace of U. Let's take a look at the proof everyone. V and W are both subspaces of U. So both of them contains the zero vector. So for sure, since both of them have zero vector, zero vector is going to be end up in their intersection. So the intersection is non-empty. Now you just need to show that it is closed under addition and scalar multiplication. To show that V intersection W is closed under addition, you're going to take two vectors in their intersection and show that their addition is also in that intersection. So let us begin. V and W are both subspaces of U, which means that both are closed under addition. Thank you for that. We already knew that. Both V1 and V2 are in V. So V1 plus V2, their addition must be in V. At the same time, since V1 and V2 are in W, their summation must be in W as well. So for sure, you can conclude that V1 plus V2 belongs to the intersection. So basically the intersection is closed under addition. So we're good with showing that it is closed under addition. Can basically prove that it is closed under scalar multiplication as well, because it's very easy. If V belongs to subspace V, CV belongs to subspace V. And since, so let me write it here. If V belongs to V, since V is a subspace, CV is also belongs to V. And since you take a vector like V in W, remember that we take that vector from their intersection. CV also belongs to W. So CV is in W, it is also in V. So CV is in their intersection. CV belongs to the intersection as well. So we just showed that it is closed under scalar multiplication. It is non-empty, it is closed under addition, and it's also closed under scalar multiplication. So on the exam, if I ask you, hey, Prove that the intersection of two subspaces of a vector space is also a subspace. These are the steps that you need to take. Let us continue. Let V and W be two subspaces of a vector space like U. Prove that the set V plus W, which is defined as all vectors U, u is equal to v plus w is a subspace of u as well. So, so far we showed that the intersection is a subspace. Now we're going to show that the summation is also a subspace. First of all, this guy is non-empty. Why is that? Zero belongs to v, zero belongs to w. If you add them together, zero belongs to the summation of these two. Now being closed under addition. Suppose U1 and U2 belongs to the addition of these two subspaces. Then U1 can be written as V1 plus W1, and also U2 can be written as 
B2 plus W2. Take a look at the format that you have here. The objects in this subspace is defined as V plus W. So whatever you take, you have to write it as the summation of two vectors from V and W. Now, if you add these two vectors together, U1 plus U2, it becomes V1 plus W1 plus V2 plus W2. Which is basically, if you take these two vectors, add them together, take these two vectors, add them together. But V1 plus V2, you can group these together. V1 plus V2 is a vector in V. W1 plus W2 is another vector in W. So you basically showed that the summation, the addition of these two vectors are also belongs to V plus W. So it is closed under addition. Now being closed under scalar multiplication. You're going to take a random scalar like C and multiply that by a random vector in U in V plus W. So you get C times V1 plus W1. You just basically distribute C into parentheses and it becomes CV1 plus CV2, CW1. Well, CV1 is in V because we know V is closed under scalar multiplication. And CW1 belongs to W because it belongs to this subspace and it is closed under scalar multiplication. So you just showed that CU1 can be written of this format and it belongs to this set that you defined here. So this set is closed under scalar multiplication, non-empty, being closed under addition, being closed under scalar multiplication. So we just proved that this set is a subspace. So again, we showed that it is intersection, and now we showed it for addition. The addition of two subspaces is also a subspace. Now describe V plus W when V and W are subspaces of the plane. V is the set of all pairs, X and zero, and W is the set of all pairs, zero and Y, y is a real number. If I add these together, what is the set that coming from the addition of these two sets? If I add these two sets together, this is basically all ordered pairs with x and y, right? So the summation of these two sets is nothing but the plane itself. 